Anne Hamilton and Meyer of Munich, World Trade Center subway mosaics on Cortland Street. Designing the World Trade Center mosaic had to be challenging because this subway station is loaded with meaning. It's the subway station that was directly under the World Trade Center when it fell. It's been closed ever since and just reopened after 17 years. Just making this video brings up a lot of complicated feelings for me, so I can only imagine that everyone working on it felt the, the same way. The design had to be appropriate for the gravity of the site, but it's also a commuter hub. I tried to find the mosaics through the surface entries on Greenwich Street. Don't try to go in that way, despite the signage. Enter through this white building, Oculus, designed by architect Santiago Calatrava the soaring subway superstructure opened in 2016. On entering, you see an underground plaza and soaring arches above. It feels like the earth was opened up and the light is pouring into this cavity. Calatrava said it suggests the image of a bird released from a child's hands. It brings spaciousness, light, and air underground. In the plaza, there's a farmer's market and shops, as well as the train entrances. Although it's underground, the soaring white structure makes this place feel spacious. Corridors line the upper levels of the open space. Walk all the way across the building to reach the one line. From the lower plaza, levels descend even further as we get closer to the trains. We are headed to the number one train. White mosaics line the walls on both sides of the station. White feels appropriate, expressing the continued sense of mourning of this place. It reminds me of the ash that buried everything. Anne Hamilton described the piece as a field of text woven from nationally and internationally authored declarations of human rights and independence. The text comes from the Declaration of Independence and from the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights. To give your word is to make a promise. These words are the foundational covenants of our society that underlie our legal system and civil rights. It's poetic and appropriate that they line the walls supporting the World Trade Center station. Frequently used words create spines or pillars that co connect the lines of text. The embossed marble letters remind me of words carved into tombs and monuments. These letters are convex though, they protrude rather than go inwards. The font, called Trajan, was inspired by the text carved into the base of Trajan's column in Rome. Trajan was a Roman emperor known for his extensive public construction works and social welfare programs for the poor. This is the triumphal column in Rome that commemorates Trajan's victory in the Dacian Wars. Carol Twombly designed the modern font Trajan that's based on the letters from the column. The very font itself refers to justice. Here, all the tiles are cubes. Notice how the cubes cross over and connect the letters in the background, uniting them and making both integral to the structure. A cube is an extremely stable form, and its repetition creates visual rhythm. Although it's cubic, notice how the background isn't straight. The tiles move in a flow like fabric. The letters protrude, so it's actually the shadows created that allow you to see the forms. The flow of tiles is called andamento. You can see little moments where two lines of cubes will converge into one. This technique is called stopiamento. Stopiamento helps create the curves that you see. The curves suggest the illusion of woven fabric, perhaps the fabric of our society. Meyer of Munich's mosaic work is exquisite. 
The material is white marble and glass. It's hard to imagine an artwork that's capable of successfully honoring the World Trade Center station. Anne Hamilton and Meyer of Munich achieved that. 